Recently I wrote uh, a blog post titled My Identity Chasm and it's about my evolving relationship with grief. And it attracted a really, really strong response when I shared it. And because of that, I figured it opened up a really important conversation. And I know that's a conversation that will be quite valuable here in this space too. So I'm gonna share it with you as a video. Um, I'll be reading those same words and I welcome your thoughts. Um, please add your comment below. I won't be able to reply to every single one of them, but I'll definitely read them. And um, I welcome you to share this. If you feel that this is valuable to your community, please do so too, because I think grief is, is something we don't talk about enough. And it's a very present force in our community. And I think sharing the conversation is a good starting point. So here goes. Like most, finding words or rationale to help cope with loss seems a daily challenge. Just when you feel like you've risen from the fog, another pang strikes and you're back there again, just as if it never left you at all. I want to acknowledge that this topic can be somewhat triggering for many, but I also want to invite you to stay and weigh uh, how it sits within your own grief experience. If sharing my family's journey with the world has taught me anything, it's the value of shared validation and communion. The platitudes around grief are, are many. It's a complex, layered onion. My experience with sharing grief However, is that you know, most are keen to placate these intense feelings with an upward remark steeped in moving on. That's all well-intentioned. As a society, we make really little time to grieve. It's a nuisance, it's an inconvenience, a weighty conversation, and we, I guess, prefer to skirt around and pass on to the next sympathetic ear. And I'm, I'm unsure if that's because we're all grief afraid or damaged inside, or if as a society we've never really developed vernacular to treat it as a mainstream conversation. Either way, you know, I'm personally trying to learn from my own grief, so here goes my onion. On the surface, my weightiest grief is tethered to navigating my mother's loss of identity through mixed dementias and her eventual death from my life. But my relationship with grief began when I lost my dad to lung cancer many years before. I made a short film uh, while he was palliating called The Unspoken, which became known as a son's love letter to his father. It forced me out to talk about the impending reality of losing a parent. And yet, truth is, I was still to navigate this new feeling. When dad died, it initiated a tumultuous season within our family. As a father myself, you know, I was still healing from the insidious fallout from my first marriage and then scrambling to rebuild my own foundations. Now I was faced with new losses to navigate. My mum's void without her lifelong partner meant that I had to fill that masculine gap. And whilst I was never super close to my older sibling, the loss of my dad initiated a complete and irreparable rift that continues to this day. Subsequently, mum developed mixed dementia, both Alzheimer's and vascular dementia, and the fissures deepened once more. And whilst we bravely stepped through that journey, I guess with juvenile optimism and really good intentions, that slow drizzling grief became deeply additive. It felt like mercury in my blood. Little by little, it accumulated and it never left me. And I expect that this weight is felt by most dealing with a loved one dying with a terminal illness. What I didn't know is that this grief would end up seeping into every tendril of my life and my career, my friends, my hopes, even my optimism. And does grief compound through generations? 
I look back at, at my dad, you know, being abandoned by his parents as a five-year-old, and I feel an overwhelming urge to take on that transgenerational grief that he was never able to process. It's another invisible weight to his memory. Then there's my mum who lost her father at age nine and her mother at 15, you know. How did that shape her ongoing mental health needs in an age when no one spoke about those things? Mum and I were always incredibly close. I still remember being a young teenager and you know, reaching out for a hand uh, when crossing the road. And in many ways, I feel my sister probably had a largely similar bond with my dad. Maybe that's why she left my life after he died. Yeah, maybe it was all too hard for her to watch another parent with her. Soberingly, we've both got our own stories that make sense to us individually, but that shared family narrative is, is gone forever. It too became a victim of grief. Many delve into grief counselling and therapy. You know, storytelling has long been my tool of choice to cope with life's big beats. I feel an overwhelming sense to document and to question and to examine and, and build a narrative around moments of challenge. For me, it's like a creative therapy to deal with those swells and simultaneously then share them with a broader audience in case someone else might be able to relate as well. And in general, sharing my stories openly has been a beautifully magnetic experience, but there's another side of grief to this too. And that is, not everyone likes what I share. And curiously, it's not the, the faceless trolling by strangers that erodes me, it's that one lifelong friend that no longer sees any value in our history, that friend that completely made themselves absent from my grieving. How could someone who's known you most of your life just abandon you so erroneously and abruptly? For me, that sense of abandonment is a difficult one to process. In a little over a decade of my life, I've lost both my parents, my only sibling, my closest family friend, as well as filaments of my own identity. And despite mum's long deterioration with dementia and my eventual reverse parenting role of caring for her, nothing Nothing can quite de-identify you as much as no longer being someone's child. All this time, I thought grief brought people together, not repel them far away. And it certainly feels like an identity chasm, this onboarding of grief through life's protracted lens. And I mean, truthfully, I'm not sure if there's a better way to prepare for it or endure it. One of my lifelong mentors and best friends is, is currently dying of cancer. And luckily, he's generous in answering my questions about his mortality. But I also know that his is yet another impending grief thread to weave into my story. Grief is an unending part of our lives, ironically. It's not going anywhere nor are we meant to ignore it or replace it. But I sure wish that we talked about it more and owned it more. And these are my first steps towards that. What's yours? <laughs>